everybody, it's Safi and Marco, Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And it's just Marco here today to talk about another episode of Your Honor. This is Your Honor Part 4, as they call it. <laughs> I've, I've always hated that whenever it's like you have episodes, it's like, this is episode 4, and what do they call it? Part 4. <laughs> It, it kind of, you know, it kind of seems like weird. You know, you have episode four, part four. I, I, don't, I don't know about that. Uh, that's not a criticism. It's just a general pet peeve that I have, I guess, when it comes to television. But anyway, let's get to the episode. This episode, I actually really liked. It seems like it, it gave me everything I wanted. It, it, after last episode, which was just okay, it it took everything that I asked for and just delivered it right in front of me. You know, you had, uh, well, not real, in some ways. I mean, obviously, at the beginning of the episode, we find out that Coffee, Kofi, whatever, he's dead now. And uh, that's that's messed up, man. That is messed up. And and the dad, Jimmy, is mad at his son for doing that. And then basically there's this big cover-up where I forgot to mention Deputy Chad from Twin Peaks The Return is now on the show as the corrupt sheriff, whatever, had the head of the prison, whatever he is. And he the warden, he just, you know, he he, he does what he did on Twin Peaks. He plays the corrupt, evil police officer, and he covers it up, and, you know, he, he does an okay job. I felt like the episode started off kind of weak, and and then it, it got really good after that whole storyline was over, because it started off, and it was just kind of about that, and about the killing, and then about, like, the cover-up, but we get a lot of Jimmy this episode, a lot of Jimmy, a lot of uh, Brian Cranston, and then a new character, which I gotta say, she's my new favorite character. I was I was upset. Kofi's gone. Uh, he was my favorite character. Well, now we got a new favorite character named Elizabeth, and she is the mother-in-law. So the mother of the wifey that got killed. Uh, was it Karen? I hope it was Karen. Uh, so Elizabeth, she comes in to basically, uh, get Adam out of trouble after Adam is Adam <laughs> at school. <laughs> we'll, t we'll talk about Adam later. <laughs> I swear I'm fed up with Adam. <laughs> I just want to kill him so badly. The character, not, not the actor, the character, I promise. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth comes to the rescue and man as soon as she's in the car with Adam taking him home she is on she is the the greatest I mean she is really good I really liked her in this episode and she just stole every scene that she was in there and and like one of the final scenes of the episode she's talking to Brian Cranston and it is just it's like watching two titans go head to head and it's hilarious because Brian Cranston's like, you know, he's he's all sentimental and he's he's making up this BS and I mean he he's saying some of the stupidest shit he said on the show so far, saying that uh, Adam, oh his his lies were very well motivated and I I commend him for his lies, and and, <laughs> and she's like, what? Are you sure you want to be saying that? Is that really something you want to teach your son? I was like, I was like, clap, clap. You're such a fantastic job. That was awesome. And that really took this episode over the edge of being great. Because, wow, she was great. She was really good. She's a powerful character. And she's going to, I hope that she plays into the rest of the season because... She really stole this episode. And it's it's tough because Brian Cranston did a great job too at the, at the end when he's talking to his son 
and and they're having a back and forth in the backyard. Oh, ba basically, I got too far ahead of myself. So basically, it's all about that cover up, and then it's kind of about relationships that are building. Uh, Brian Cranston, <laughs> I forgot his name. I I, I it. it, it I feel bad about that because, I mean, it, he is playing a great character. I mean, it's not like I just see Brian Cranston. I see a character, but it's just, I don't know his, the character's name. Uh, Brian Cranston is in a relationship with Lee, the lawyer, and she's pretty good. And there's a little stuff with her. And then let's get to Adam, the problem child. That's that's what we're going to call him from now on. Problem Child Adam. He's in school, and yet again, we have a scene where you have the, the teacher, Franny, the photography teacher. She looks 16. Uh, you know, she's short. She She's wearing clothes like a student. She looks like a student. And it also turns out she's in a relationship with him as well. And... I guess I missed that. I I, I I guess she was the girl from the first episode. I'm I'm kind of confused. I'll have to go back and check that. But yeah, and and then there's this really stupid scene in the hallway where uh, it seems a little contrived and uh, sort of like really convenient because the best friend says some nasty things about the photography teacher, and of course Adam gets really offended. And Adam starts beating up on his uh, friend. And, of course, that's just Adam being Adam. I mean, what do you expect from what do you expect from him at this point on the show? <laughs> and then he's, he, and he just always has the same look on his face, like he's up to no good. I mean, he looks guilty. I mean, when you look at him, it's like, <laughs> do you really believe anything that kid says? And and this this Elizabeth comes in, and it's like, you know, she's perfect. She's exactly right. And, and then there's a scene where uh, he's lying straight to her face, and sh and you know, you can just tell that he's lying and 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 she's just like you know she's like wtf is that uh and and then so yeah all that happens and basically other than that it's about the night with the dinners basically the uh baxter family has a dinner and the judges fan oh wait is it michael i think it's michael i think it's brian Cranston's name uh, Michael's family has dinner, and then the Baxter family has dinner, and then there's a little vigil that's held, and I like the two dinners, how they're paralleling each other. I thought that was cool. Once again, a lot of parallels on this show. That's how I like to write uh, when I write uh, screenplays and such. I like having parallels like that. And other other than that, uh, and we get to see uh, the the daughter finally of uh, Jimmy, Jimmy's daughter. We get to see her finally, and she has uh, quite a bit uh, quite a bit of lines, and and so I appreciated that because I and I I loved how much we got to see of the Baxter family in this episode because, to be honest, I want to see more of them because. It, it's felt a little uneven the way that we've been focusing so much on the hero family, the quote unquote hero family. And as well, there was a, a reference to uh, Jimmy Baxter's movie that he was in that I saw this past year. Uh, there's at one point, someone says that uh, Jimmy is a serious man. <laughs> I thought that was funny. That's that's a nice little reference there for you, for those of you who didn't catch that. Uh, I I I I would hope people catch that because that was like, wow, right out in the open. And besides that, at the end of the episode, Adam does another stupid thing where he goes to the vigil, and he basically walks right up to the daughter. And then <laughs> she's vaping and she blows the smoke in his face. <laughs> and I thought that's hilarious. And 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 that that was that was interesting, but I I wanted to see more of them interacting. 
I hope we get to see more of them interacting because uh, Adam needs to have something happen to him somewhere. I mean, I'm he's just I mean he's he's right there he's right out in the open and and look at his face look at he looks like a a criminal he's got this like hoodie he he looks like he's up to no good he he's he's got this like this this like sad dog look on look on his face like he's done something like he stole some cookies or something like he he looks bad like remember that scene in Hot Fuzz where where they're sitting there and they're they're looking at people and they're like trying to figure out who's a criminal and who's not. It's like you look at Adam and it's like look at that. I mean even Jimmy's daughter looks less criminal than he does. I mean seriously, he looks like someone you should look into. And then at the very end of this episode, of course, we get a little sad tragedy thing happen where well, first off Kofi's uh, gang boss, I guess, he pays off the uh, Kofi's family and uh, gives the son this big wad of cash to to help out, uh, which which was nice of him. Of course, we all know that it was basically an incentive for this kid to probably join when he grows up older. Uh, you know, you know how these gangs work. You know, he was just basically it's like an investment to him. Of like, oh, I'm going to look like a nice guy by giving you some money to help out your family. And, you know, you're going to stay loyal and uh, join the gang like your brother was. Uh, like your brother did when you're older, right? And, you know, it was that type of thing to me. And 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 at, he comes back after he gets food and groceries. And and then the Jimmy basically has Kofi's house blown up, basically, because he was mad that he could not have Kofi killed himself. And so he had to take it out on somebody. And so he just decided to uh, kill re- kill the rest of Kofi's family, which was pretty awful. I mean, the, the one issue that I had was the way that it was shot. It was really not shot to where it was emotionally impactful. I really felt nothing when I saw it except for, oh... Uh, you know, I wish that the music would have been better. I wish that, uh, I don't know. It just wasn't shot very well with that scene. I, I did not find it impactful. And then we, we of course see Jimmy and he's all powerful and whatever. And, and also the, the bloody handkerchief finally comes out and that was funny. And Brian Cranston has to get out of that and he's got to hide it. And you know, that, that was pretty funny. And, I can't believe I just did one of those shitty recap reviews where I just go through the whole episode. But, yeah, overall, as I said, I really liked this episode. It gave me everything I wanted. It was very entertaining. It was fun. It had a lot of great dialogue, especially from Elizabeth, who's the standout. I would say she's the best character of the whole show. And so I would give this episode an A-. minus. I hope we get to see more and more of the Baxter family. Uh, to be honest, I really just want to see them for the most part, and then a little of Brian Cranston. Uh, I don't want to see more of Adam doing Adam things, <laughs> because, I mean, yet again in this episode, first off, he has a scene with his teacher, then he has a scene with his best friend, and then he almost gets expelled, and then he goes up to oh, and then he has the thing with the dinner with the oh god, Adam. Adam, urgh! I want to strangle you, Adam. <laughs> and and so yeah, I, I look forward to next episode, and uh, I I hope you guys like the episode too. Uh, it, it is a little dour of a show. I gotta say, you know, I, I wake up every Sunday morning, I make my Sunday pancakes, and I watch this show. It is kind of weird, but what was what was really interesting was they had this great looking, mm, this great looking New Orleans crab. Oh my God, this crab dinner with corn and crab and oh my God, did that look good? I I was eating pancakes. 
and I was getting hungry while eating the pancakes. Like, it was just so good looking. That made me jealous. Adam gets to eat all that stuff, and then I have to eat these stupid pancakes. I, I hate you, Adam. Uh, but anyways, if you like this video, give it a like, thumbs up, comment. I'd love to discuss more with you in the comments. I always respond to the comments. Uh, even if they're negative, uh, if they're constructive, and if they're not just there to troll or hate, I always respond, and I always look out for anything. So goodbye, everybody. See you soon for part five.